Okay, so let's do a tier list for programming languages. So first off, we have Fortran. Now, the thing with Fortran is, Fortran is one of the oldest languages, and it's probably also one of the most developed. Believe it or not, but Fortran actually has more programming features than, let's say, C does. But it's also not used by a lot of people. So I'm going to say it, it could fit into S tier, but I'm going to put it into A tier. Haskell. Haskell is a functional programming language, but I feel like Haskell is all too difficult for some people to learn. And But at the same time, it's actually really interesting. Like if you want to learn a language that's going to teach you a lot about functional programming, Haskell is the way to go. But it's not very practical, right? You're not going to find a lot of jobs in Haskell unless you're in academia. And because of that, I'm going to put that into B tier. Lisp. Now, the thing with Lisp is, Lisp is probably one of the easiest languages to learn, but it's also one of the hardest languages to understand. Uh, the syntax in Lisp is like so easy, you can basically learn it in like a couple of hours. But you also need to understand all the concepts behind Lisp to actually, you know, fully grasp the language and use it to its full extent. Um, I'm going to say I want to put Lisp into A tier, but it could very well be in S tier. Mm, I'm going to say, I'm going to just put it into A tier. But yeah, again, Lisp is really awesome. Latex. So if you ever need to type up your homework, if you do math, if you do, like, if you want to make a really, like, nice looking presentation. So if you want to make a really nice looking, I don't know, like, PDF, or you want to make a really nice looking document, Latex is the way to go. Latex has packages for literally everything. You can make resumes in this, you can make PowerPoints, you can make anything. So... I think uh, Latex, um, it, it's not really a programming language. It's more of a markup language. But I'm going to say I'm going to put it into, um, I would say B tier. But again, it's really good. Lua. Lua is one of the, again, like the it's just kind of like Lisp, right? The Lisp is really easy to learn. Uh, but the thing with Lua is it's also, biz. it's actually built into a lot of software. So unlike, let's say, Fortran or uh, Lisp, you do actually get use out of knowing Lua, right? So if you know Lua, you can actually go out and uh, write software for, let's say, I think uh, some games actually integrated into their scripting language. So again, if you want to learn a language that's easy to learn and is actually usable in applications, so for example, if you want to do some game scripting, you can definitely use Lua. And I'm going to put this into S tier. I'm going to put this into S tier because Lua is honestly one of the best languages to learn if you're a beginner. Ruby. So... Um, uh, it's kind of hard to say with the Ruby because I, I think it used to be a solid eight here, like back in the day when everyone was using it, but uh, it's, it's really fallen off since then. And I think, I think it's fair to put it into even C tier because it doesn't really have the backing it once had. Swift. So Swift is a language that Apple created, and it's honestly one of the best languages to learn right now. Now, the thing with Apple is I think Apple makes one of the best software products on the market. It actually takes the programming paradigm and takes it to the next level. So if you want to learn a new language and you have an Apple computer you want to develop for the iOS, definitely pick Swift. I'm going to put them in the A tier. Now, the thing is, I think R is an awesome language, but I also think that Python is better than R in this regard. So... I'm not going to say R is a bad language. I'm not going to say it's a good language, but it, it's kind of like, my, you know, it's kind of like Ruby. So I'm going to put it into C tier. Okay, Python. Okay, so Python right here. Okay, I don't, I don't, even, I don't need to explain it. I don't need to explain why Python belongs in S tier. It just does. Okay, so Python, S tier, end of story. Okay, PowerShell. Um, if you are a person who does scripting on Windows, uh, PowerShell is just the way to go, right? It's the scripting language on the Windows systems. So, yeah, uh, not really much to say, you know, if you want to do scripting in Windows, just use PowerShell. Okay, so PHP. PHP is like the bare basics of web programming. So if you want to do some web scripting, PHP it used to be the way to go. But the thing is, a lot of companies still use PHP. So if you're a beginner, it would actually be really easy for you to find a job as a PHP developer if you know PHP. Uh, now, I'm not going to say PHP is an A tier or B tier. I would say actually it's in C tier because uh, the language itself is actually more in maintenance mode than anything. Um, other languages like Go and uh, Node.js, they, they kind of are taking over uh, PHP, right? So uh, being a PHP developer is more of a maintenance kind of position, right? So 
you're you will be I don't think a lot of people would be starting new projects in PHP. They'd actually prefer to use something like Go or JavaScript uh, going forward. But again, PHP is used everywhere and you will probably find a maintenance position for a PHP role. Okay, so Bash. Now, the problem with Bash is that the language isn't that well designed, right? So if it was a very well designed language, I would actually put it into S tier right away. But again, the language is not that good, right? But it's one of the most usable uh, languages. It's one of the most usable scripting languages on any system, right? So uh, if you're on Windows, as a Windows user, you're probably not using uh, PowerShell too often. But as a Linux user, you are probably using Bash like almost every single day, if you're a power user, that is. And because of that, I'm gonna put that into eight here. Bash, it's definitely an eight here, but if the language is better designed, I would actually put it into S tier. Okay, so assembly. Now, it's kind of hard to say this about assembly, but assembly isn't really that good of a language, right? Um, x86 assembly, it's not really well designed. I don't even think that ARM assembly isn't that well designed, you know, in comparison to other languages, right? Like it, this is me coming from a perspective of, I want to get sit on my computer. This is me coming from a perspective. I want to sit on my computer, actually get something done, right? So the thing about assembly is it, it's kind of nice to understand how assembly works but you are almost never gonna actually write any code in assembly unless you're doing it just to learn assembly, right? So uh, because of that, I'm gonna put assembly into D tier, not because it's actually a bad language, it's not because I I don't like assembly, it's just that you're never gonna use it. Like all the languages of it, basically all the languages above here, they basically allow you to do what assembly does. And there's really no reason for you to use assembly like directly unless you're doing something very, very specific, but that's a different story. Okay, so C. Um, I'm gonna say C does not belong in S tier just because C is a language which is very old and it doesn't necessarily have all the bells and whistles that other languages do. But it's also not as bad as assembly just because some people do use C for their applications. Um, I'm gonna say that C kind of belongs in A tier just because you can use it for some very specific things, but you're not gonna be using it as just, just like a catch-all language. So I'm gonna say C belongs right here. And another thing about C is that it's actually very simple to learn. It's a very easy to learn language that can let you do a lot of things, which is why a lot of uh, beginners start with C, just because it's very easy, but it also lets you do a lot of stuff. Okay, so C++. I'm gonna say C++ is basically like C, except it has all the bells and whistles that other languages do. And because of that, I'm gonna put an S tier, just because C++ is just C, but it has more stuff. So C++ is just C, but it has more stuff. So that's pretty much it. So C Sharp, okay. So as a language, I think that C Sharp belongs in S tier. But when I kind of think about where you can use C Sharp, I kind of want to put it into A tier, just because C Sharp is a language. It has a lot of bells and whistles, just like C++. Uh, it's actually memory safe, so it's a lot easier to use than C++. Uh, so the reason I'm gonna put it into A tier is just because I don't really see it being used everywhere, right? Like I see it being used for web applications. I see it being used in, let's say, uh, some game engines, but it's it, it didn't really spread a lot, right? Like it's kind of like limited by I, I, won't, I'm not, I don't want to say Microsoft, but I'm going to say that it's really limited by something. There's something preventing people from picking it up and using it. But as a language itself, it's an awesome language. So I'm going to put it into A tier. Okay, so HTML and CSS. So HTML and CSS, in comparison to LaTeX, at least in comparison to the LaTeX, are a lot better. And I feel like the only reason LaTeX is actually this high is because of just the it's it has legacy and it's a it's something that's used in academia right so if you're an academic you're kind of expected to use latex but html and css they have so much built into it they have so many features that allow you to present on the screen a paper in any way you want a web page in any way you want uh, you can even build uh, video games with the help of javascript i'm just going to put this into a tier because these two in combination, they can basically build anything you want. They can show anything you want on the screen and that's really powerful. Okay, so next up is JavaScript. So the thing with JavaScript is, JavaScript as a language is not deserving of S tier, but I can't put it in the A tier either just because of how popular it is, right? 
So if you go and you talk to anyone on the street, like, and you tell them, I know JavaScript, they'll know exactly what you mean. But if you go on the street and tell people, oh, I know Haskell or I know R, they wouldn't know what you're talking about just because JavaScript has such such a stranglehold on you know people's consciousness. Like everyone knows what JavaScript is. Not many people know what other languages are. So for example, uh, a person would not know what Ruby is or Rust, but JavaScript is just everywhere. Everyone knows what JavaScript is. And that's why you really need to learn JavaScript just because everyone knows it, everyone wants to use it. And it's a really good language to learn just because it lets you interface with HTML and uh, CSS. Okay, so Go. Um, I would say Go, it, it's more of a, how should I put it? I, I kind of want to put this into F tier just because it's a, it's a new language. Not many people actually know about it. Um, I, I think I think it's mostly used in uh, DevOps. So I believe Docker and Kubernetes are built in Golang. Uh, but I can't really discount it because it's actually a really good language. Like if I was just judging it by the language itself, I would actually put it into S tier because the language is very simple. It's very easy to learn. Um, I would say uh, Go is kind of like the modern C, right? So Go is kind of like the modern C, but I can't put it into like S or A tier just because not many people know about it, not many people are using it. Um, I would say that Go should kind of, you kind of need to put this into like B tier just because it has potential for A or S tier later on, but right now it's just in B tier. It's, it's, not, it's not as developed as you want it to be. But I, again, like in two, three years, it could be an S tier or an A tier, but right now it's in B tier. And the reason I say that is because uh, JavaScript, it used to be like in F tier, right? But it was just like a joke language. People would just use it uh, to make, uh, you know, pretty websites for themselves. But, you know, now it's an S tier just because everyone's using it. Everyone needs a JavaScript developer. Okay, so Java. Um, I would say that Java, it's... Uh, it's a very, how should I put it? It's it's a very solid language, right? So if you know Java, it's very respectable. Everyone knows, everyone needs a Java developer, I guess. Uh, now, the thing is, is that uh, as a language itself, so as a language itself, it's actually worse than C-sharp. So I would actually put Java as B just because it's kind of like C-sharp, except it's not as good. Okay, so Kotlin. Kotlin I would say Kotlin is in the same tier as B. So it's better than Java, definitely. I would say it's almost better than C Sharp, but just because of the popularity, because not many people are using it, I'm gonna put it into B tier. MATLAB. So the thing with MATLAB is um, it really depends on who you are, right? This could fall in anywhere along this, uh, this could fall anywhere. Here. So this could be in any tier from S to F, right? But it really depends on who you are. If, if I'm talking to a software developer, right, you really don't need uh, MATLAB whatsoever. So like MATLAB, you, for a software developer is an F tier, but for an engineer, it could either be an S tier or A tier. So th this is more of a, so this is more of a, so this, so this video is more for software developers. So I'm going to say, um, MATLAB is more in C tier just because MATLAB is one of those things that you don't really need unless you're doing uh, engineering, right? Like only engineers need MATLAB. You don't really need it to do any software development. Okay, so SQL. As a developer, you definitely need SQL, but I don't think it belongs in S tier. SQL is definitely one of those things that is that I think a good place for it is either in B tier or A tier, right? Just because the language itself isn't that well, it's not well designed, right? It's not the best design language, but it lets you do like these like really awesome things that other languages just don't let you do, right? It's a very domain specific language that it's really good at querying data. And that's basically what it's good for, right? So because of that, I'm going to say it's in uh, B tier. It's very specific, but everyone needs it, right? So you definitely need to learn SQL if you want to be a developer, but it's not really the best language. Okay, Perl. Now, the thing is, Perl, it used to be kind of like in the same place as Python, like everyone knew it, everyone liked it. But these days, I don't really know many people who use Perl. So I'm just going to put into C tier because it's not one of those things that's very well used these days. Okay, so the next language is Rust. And I think the problem with Rust is that 
I want to put it in S tier, but I just can't because of all the issues it has. So one of the issues is that it's a very complicated language. Uh, another issue is that um, the community really, like, I won't, I won't even say that it's a bad language. It's just that a lot of people want to like Rust, but the people who really like Rust, they don't really use the language. Like they say, Rust is awesome. Rust is gonna like, you know, replace everything, but you don't really see them using it like in their day-to-day -day lives which is why I, I can't really put it into S tier just because I don't really see a lot of people using it. I see some people using it, but I don't see like, I don't see like big companies hiring like Rust developers, right? So in terms of just the, the availability of jobs, being able to find a developer role with Rust, I would actually put it under C tier just because it's really not, it's really not that well used, right? It's like below even Golang. But because a lot of people like it and because the language itself is actually really awesome because it lets you write memory safe applications that are just as fast as C++ or C, I'm going to put it into B tier, the same with Golang. Okay, so Visual Basic, um, I would say Visual Basic, definitely the language is not well designed. So I'm going to put this under, I would say, C. So again, it's just one of those things that people use at work. No one really cares about it outside of work. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you later.